technology is changing the way we live, but it's not just our tablets, phones and homes. The countryside is also being poured into the digital age. We've come to the biggest solar farm in the UK to see how an estate that offers 30 game days a year deals with the latest addition to the landscape. Dean Strangeway has been gamekeeper at this estate in Hampshire since the plans for the solar farm were passed. The first year it was going up was a bit of a, t a challenge because um, there was a lot of disturbance and we were a bit, it was a bit scary at times really because it did affect some of the drives because of the disturbance of the machinery and the people. But now it's up, it's, it's blending in quite well and it will only get better with age. Um, the impact of the solar farm has been um, absolutely fantastic really. You know, we get a good lot of um, ground nesting birds. It's the first year here after speaking to the boss that he's known in a good 20 years that we've had um, broods of lapwings hatch off. We've had five broods of lapwing. Some of the drives are quite close to the solar farm and we, we've never really had much of an issue. Um, the main issue is my pickers up trying to pick up retrieved birds or wounded birds should I say. But we've never had much of an issue. We do stand some guns quite close to the solar farm. Never been an issue with falling shot or anything like that. Never been any complaints. Um, and it just shows that uh, we can run a successful shoe next to one of the biggest solar farms in the UK. And I, I invite people, you know, come and have a look at what we do. I think the way things are changing now, it, it, you know, farms have to diverse, shoots have to diverse, and everything has to be modern and you just have to adapt with the times because times change year on year. Dean is not alone in having his shooting ground split by acres of panels. Our own Tim Pillbeam has a rifle range next to over 30 acres of panels in Sussex. Just to add, the range came first and the panels later. From the environmental point of view, diversity point of view, we discussed that actually it's, it enhances the farm. It's incredible difference. Over three years since the farm the solar farm has been um, laid down, is the, the, the increase in, in uh, fauna and flora has been amazing. But we have to work with it. Uh, we shoot a lot of rabbits on the farm here, we shoot lots of foxes as well. And you have to be slightly mindful that um, these panels are quite fragile um, and they're quite expensive as well. So when we do go rabbit shooting around that side, we can't shoot anywhere towards it. Uh, we, are, we can't shoot along the side of it very easily because the ricochet will, could quite easily break a panel. And with regards to foxes, we can't really go any near it. So we're standing on my little range. Uh, I use it for testing rifles, ammunition, firearms, anything to do with hunting. The, the actual range itself is actually behind me and, is actually, and, the, and the panel's over there. So it's very, very safe. It works absolutely fine. Um, it just shows you actually you can work with solar panels and with solar farms because they are just, they are, you know, they're generally put in place which, which kind of work with the, the local environment. For all the positives, there are obvious issues with this much glass. It's a very large target if something does fall from the sky. I had a few friends down and we were practicing with a bow and arrow. And for whatever reason, an arrow went up in the air and I never seen it like it, it is the wind took it and it just went whoosh, and it landed right in the middle of the solar panel. And it shows you that uh, you, got, you have to be careful. You know, um, that was a bit of a one-off, um, but it just shows you have to work with the solar panels. With solar farms becoming a more common sight in the countryside, we spoke to the National Gamekeepers Organisation about their views on land being given over to generating solar power. We don't have specific policy on solar panels, but if anything that is good for wildlife has got to be good for the countryside, as long as it's not taking up too much green space. I know Dean quite well. The farm, the farm Dean's, Dean's keepering on, I grew up on the farm next door. Uh, so I've lived there all my life until quite recently. And, and the, the solar park there was controversial, massively. Uh, but speaking to Dean and being going back home, uh, it's been really nice to see uh, lapwings, which I don't ever remember ever nesting there in 40 years. When talking to people who live, work and shoot near the solar panels, the increase in wildlife diversity has been a recurring theme, and that can only be a positive thing. It's a win-win scenario for nature conservation and even for shooting, because the, the um, spin-off from this is that if you look at the original habitat of the sites where the solar farms are, uh, they were originally all seed rape fields, so first you put a solar farm on 
and even if you didn't do anything, you'd get the increase in biodiversity immediately within 12 months. Solar panels, like the wind turbines, split opinion. The turbines are often cited as having a negative impact on bird migration and offshore developments blamed for seabed destruction. The solar panels lay a silver blanket over our green countryside, but at the same time provide a small window of opportunity for wildlife to flourish.